Hello, and welcome to the JNCL Nicholas Language at the Intersection Insights interview series, where we talk with professionals from many fields to hear their perspectives on how multilingualism moves our world. The Joint National Committee for Languages and the National Council for Language and International Studies proudly presents this series with generous sponsorship support from Vista Higher Learning. I'm Amanda Seewald, current president of the Joint National Committee for Languages and the National Council for Language and International Studies, JNCL Nicholas. And today we introduce you to Gabriel Albano, an associate principal and structural engineer at EDG Architecture, who will help us explore the intersection of language and engineering and how multilingualism moves his world. Hi, my name is Gabriel Albano, or Gabriel Albano, as, as you prefer. I'm a professional engineer, and my language intersection is uh, language and engineering. So the first question that I have for you is, how do you use more than one language in your life and in your work? I constantly use both languages. In construction, it's extremely important for communication with the workers, uh, especially when we're talking about medium and small projects. The, the a Spanish speaking community is majority and you can literally be ahead of everyone because the level of understanding is above and beyond what any other only English speaker can can have. And what parts of your life, personal and 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 professionally, would not be possible if you weren't multilingual? With the technology these days, you can get away with a bunch without speaking another language but one thing is get away with and doing some stuff and the other thing is doing it right and uh and i noted one simple example i got help from my office from my boss can this just english speaker and uh because i was out of town and uh they couldn't understand him uh i came the following day and i fix everything because the direction was not clear. Uh, that means I, every day for me is both languages. And would you say that some of that is not just an understanding of the directions or the specific pieces, but also really kind of an understanding culturally of how to communicate with someone? Yes, they feel uh, more confident with me than with my boss, than his only English speaker. Yes, that's exactly what happened. It's, it's in in my own experience, in my own house, you uh, with the service, uh, especially with the services, then uh, they trust. You, you, can, you can have better service and cheaper service daily. This is one thing that I noted. So how have you found that in society as a whole and the things that you're doing, specifically in your field in engineering, how have you found that language connects to what you're able to achieve in, in your outcomes, in your goals for the projects you're working on specifically? I wanna do a reverse, no using Spanish. When uh, in my youth, long time ago, I received, I got lucky and received a, uh, a work offer to work here in New York, uh, mostly in Spanish speaking countries, but based in New York. And I arrived almost with no English. And I learned English with just, uh, fighting hard and uh, listening and uh, studying and even if it's not flawless I noted the importance of the language if I had uh, the English as uh, my second language before the emigrate my life would be way easier and and and, and faster growing it took me easily 10 years to reach the point that I'm in now probably it could to reduce in half and, you know, it's interesting. So if we were to take that and, and also reverse it, like you, you're here, you've been in the United States for a while and you mm -hmm. came, you know, and learned English here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and think about, you know, we've got so many Americans, right? Like millions of Americans who are monolingual and don't speak another language. And so mm -hmm. maybe talk a little bit about how societally and, you know, culturally in the United States, how you see it would be different if we looked at things um, through a multilingual lens. Que debemos ser, debemos ser más multilingües aquí en los Estados Unidos y por qué? Absolutamente. The level of understanding that you have with the multilingual people is way bigger than with sing, just only single lingual. Uh, I'm, I'm having conversation with contractors that are 
Americans and they grew up in Spanish speaking families and they speak in Spanish with me on site because it's the level of the communication in construction is in Spanish for this level of buildings. Uh, I have co-workers then they said, I'm kind of envy you then you can have a better communication with uh, other co-workers or other professionals for that reason. Sometimes when I have a, a simple experience, the experiences, sorry, experiences, then the foreman in, on site is only monolingual and I'm helping this foreman because he or she is not, uh, it's, it's really hard for them to communicate with the other workers. Sometimes I, I know a, a lot of, uh, then even if it's chop chop and they have uh, grammatical mistakes, but they try so hard to speak other languages because as they know and they realize then uh, they can do better quicker and cheaper job if they speak both languages, or at least two languages. That's wonderful. So, entonces, vamos a hacer un poquito de esto en español. Ahora, si Perfecto. Quieres. Hola, mi nombre es Gabriel Albano, o Gabriel, if you're an English speaker. Soy ingeniero. Uso uh, constantemente español e inglés en mi profesión. Es fundamental para mí hablar las dos uh, lenguas. Eh, incluso con, tengo compañeros de trabajo que también hablan español y les sugiero que hablen español con los uh, trabajadores, aunque tengan mucho acento porque son nativos americanos, pero se manejan bien y, y después de la primera uh, vez que lo usan, me dicen, tenías razón, es mucho más fácil la comunicación. A veces es mitad y mitad, a veces solo inglés o a veces es solo um, español pero se llegan a resultados mucho más elevados y de calidad. Perfecto, perfecto. Entonces, también quiero saber para ti, ¿cómo te sientes hablar tu idioma, bueno, nativo? Cada día de tu vida aquí en los Estados Unidos te, te da más, bueno, ¿cómo te, te hace sentir? Tengo que confesar que en los primeros años me sentía como limitado. Sentía que me juzgaban porque hablaba español o que se notaba que hablaba español en, hablando inglés. Lentamente me di cuenta que es una ventaja, no, una, no una, un escollo. No me preguntes cómo se dice escollo en inglés porque no lo sé. <risa> And, um, y lentamente me di cuenta que si, no, si te parece inapropiado que hable dos idiomas, es el problema de la persona que tengo adelante. Para mí es todo lo contrario. Tengo resultados uh, mucho uh, en mi profesión, mucho mejor resultados gracias a, a que hablo dos idiomas. Una, es una, una pequeña experiencia que tuve, uh, incluso mi jefe, cuando tuvieron un problema con una obra, el, tratando de defender, uh, el contratista trató de defenderse que sus trabajadores no hablan correctamente inglés. Y mi jefe dijo, no, el error no es de ellos porque las instrucciones fueron dadas en español por mí y yo soy fluente, uh, hablo perfectamente español y estaba correcto. Lo que, el que estaba mal era el monolingüe. Es muy importante, uh, aunque sea hablar mitad y mitad, no importa, pero comunicarse en un idioma que les es uh, más confortable a todo el mundo. Muy importante. Y también si tú estabas hablando con bueno, estudiantes que quieren ser uh -huh. ingenieros un día, entonces, ¿por qué puedes decir a ellos por qué es tan importante ser multilingüe? En ingeniería en, es fundamental si trabajas en cualquiera de las, lo que tengo experiencia yo en las dos costas y en América Latina, incluso en, en los países que no hablo el idioma, pero en los que uh, pude usar el español, es fundamental. En mi experiencia, especialmente en Miami, en, en la construcción de la estación terminal del tren de, de alta velocidad, noté que si no hablas español, estás perdido. Toda la comunicación es en español. Es, es cómico, pero los, los emails sí. van en inglés. La comunicación oral va en español. Interesante. Uh, sí, no sé si es un tema legal, pero es, es, es común. Y es muy común empezar en inglés y seguir. Y he visto a uh, gente, uh, me recuerdo un jamaiquino con un acento muy fuerte en español 
pero la única forma que tuvo de él de poder trabajar en Florida was, uh, fue aprendiendo español. So there's a Jamaican guy that worked in Miami, and the only mm -hmm. way that he was really able to work was to speak in Spanish. Correct. Wow. wow. Conocí nice. una sola persona que no hablaba una palabra de español trabajando en esa obra y tuvo muchos problemas, muchos problemas de comunicación. Pero todo el mundo tenía que hablar algo de español. Si no, no es imposible. I don't know if you know that I taught uh, for a long time in high school and engineering, and I love to continue doing it. And I'm doing it. I, I taking the time in English or Spanish with the workers, explaining why each direction are, are made. You know, it, my decision is made based on what, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't like people just because I say so. I always explain to them. And that is, is yeah, take me 15, 20 more minutes, so what? This is uh, saved me hours of, of, of repairs and redoing stuff. Teachers are going to be watching this, right? So, and one of the challenges that we face in the United States in education is the teachers who are not language teachers don't value language, right? It happens in high schools. It definitely happens in the universities. You go and study engineering, mm -hmm. you're not required to take a language. And that's why I asked you that question, right? Because, you know, what we are trying to do with our advocacy is to convince universities, convince legislators how important it is to fund programs that support multilingualism because ultimately it serves to help every area of every career and every area that we're trying to, you know, what we're trying to achieve. So as a teacher, yeah. I see the value of multilingualism is. Why don't you complete that statement? Perfect. Um, as a teacher, the multilanguage is, the, I think the word important is, is short, felt short, is uh, beyond fundamental. In, anybody should have understanding of multiple languages and be at least fluent in two. And even if you have mistakes and grammatical, but it's super important. No, uh, I noted not only for um, to be a professional, it's just to enjoy. It's not the same just visiting a, a, a country speaking the language and just be a tourist. The experience is completely different. Uh, enjoy a movie in the in the language that you can speak. You can um, enjoy details then get lost, right? The translator, uh, the, the translator always is it uh, will betray you, right? Because it's a it's his decision and use one word or the word. And when you manage to do both languages, it's important. I'm I for example I cannot use I cannot re, uh, watch a movie with subtitles in English, because I'm correcting the subtitle. That's wrong, that's the wrong word, right? And uh, that means it's not only a profession, from the professional point of view, have multi-language, uh, be a multi-language uh, person is for cultural purpose, purposes as well. And, and uh, coming back again to the, my profession is, is even if you don't manage the technical language, of uh, be an engine in Spanish or be an English engine in English. I went to school in Spanish and one of the credits that you need to pass is one language, Italian, French or Spanish or um, English, you decide. And, uh, and I was surprised and here they don't ask for that. And I passed, but in, I decided to go with Italian and I learned a bunch of technical terms in Italian. And that uh, used to be really fluent. And way I immigrate was a co-worker in my first job here from Albania. Then her English was way better than mine, but she was fluent in Italian. I was fluent in Italian and we worked together in Italian in New York. And thanks her, I was slowly learning English, speaking Italian with her. That's is kind of my story. I used to be, really fluent and but the last 15 years i didn't speak italian i need to really catch up again but uh see for me my limitations if i didn't have one language at least and half of the other uh, i couldn't achieve what i achieved if you could talk to a legislator about why it's important to support language education what would you say it's important to support language education because in, in my youth, it was really hard for me to really learn another language. My the first language that I really um, learned was Italian uh, because I had connection with my family. And I, it was hard to learn English, but I keep uh, insisting, insisting. And 
and uh, finally I got it. Thanks, my husband was a big part of it. Of course, I'm still struggling to be improving every day, and um, and have another language to work with is fundamental. Is uh, is is you are not only a better professional, you are a better person because you can reach other people in a social level, more um, more connected within the social level, right? Of each person. People feel more comfortable if you speak their language. You feel more comfortable because you fully understand those people. And uh, I cannot really have an uh, excuse to don't learn another language. Is um, who insist in oh English is enough easily uh, realize quickly in life then it's not. You need to know another language. And uh, when you travel, you have it. And uh, and when you work, you have it. It's uh, coworkers then uh, learn just to have a friend. Sometimes um, it's the only way to have a friend, a close friend, because as they are both speaking different languages, they find one language in common, and otherwise you want to miss that friend because you are not going to have a, a connection. They are um, the 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 necessity of have languages is uh, social, economical, and professional. You are a better person if you can uh, communicate in different languages. That's my understanding. That concludes today's featured story from our Language at the Intersection Insights interview series. For more information about the advocacy work of the Joint National Committee for Languages and National Council for Languages and International Studies, please visit www.languagepolicy.org. To learn more about this interview series, hear stories from other professionals, and explore how language moves our world, visit www.languagepolicy.org slash language at the intersection. Thank you to our interviewees for sharing their stories, Thank you to our series sponsors, Vista Higher Learning, and thank you all for listening.